Good morning, Good News Fellowship. Um, if we could just gather around. I was um, uh, reminded this morning, uh, first off, you know, glad that you are, are here. Um, thank you for, for joining us. Um, as I was driving in uh, this morning, there's that, that just that gorgeous gorgeous sunrise, and uh, I was reminded of these verses here in Lamentations chapter 3. Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish, for his mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And I don't know about you, but I just, I needed uh, that this morning. You know, so there's just, there's so much going around um, that just this a reminder God is faithful. His mercies, they're, they're new every morning. Uh, I know the primary thing on most of our minds is what is going on with the coronavirus uh, and the fear that comes with that. Uh, so I just want to open by just telling you a couple of things. First off, um, any questions you have about how that is going to impact our church family, we're trying to communicate well through Facebook, through email, our church website. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to call me or email, email the church office or my email. Um, all of that is in, is in our church directory. If you don't have one, there's a ton in the back. Please grab one. Uh, secondly, we're doing things a little different this morning. First off, we're, we're asking that we not shake hands. We're not going to be passing the offering plate. We have a, an offering a box in the back so where you can uh, give at the end of the service as, as you leave. We also have serving uh, online at our um, website where you can give. And then uh, we'll also have some announcement, announcements at the end of our service today, just about kind of how, how uh, things might impact our church community, um, and just have a, also have a, a time of just kind of family church discussion about what, just kind of, you know, what's going on in each other's lives, um, some idea and how, ideas on how we can stay connected through all of this. Uh, but the other dimension I want to spend some time praying with you is what God does in these situations. And, and you know, one of the first places my mind went to this week was uh, in Matthew, uh, where Jesus promised in the last days, there's going to be wars and rumor, rumors of wars and disease and pestilence and those kinds of things and in increase. And, and you know, I, I don't think, uh, I'm not saying that the coronavirus is a sign of this or that, but one of the things we see throughout scripture is that what the Lord does is he shakes the foundations of the world and shows us the things we take for granted are not things that we can take for granted. Jonathan Edwards, uh, one of the great preachers of American history said this. He says, it is no security to men for one moment that there are, any, that there are no visible means of death at hand. It is no security to a natural man that he is now in health and that he does not see which way he should now immediately go out of the world by any accident and that there is no visible danger in any respect in his circumstances. The manifold and continual experience of the world in all ages shows this is no evidence that a man is not on the very brink of eternity and that the next step may be into another world. You know, here we are dealing with the coronavirus, something so small you can't even see it, and yet it radically can change life. So one of the things we pray is that God would use this just to help people under, understand that it is foolish to live as if death is not coming. And that for us as a church family, that we are prepared, we are ready to share with them. I'm going to invite uh, Trevor Durbin up. He's one of our elders to uh, uh, just to share um, uh, pr uh, some perspective, and then we're going to have a, a time of prayer together. First off, I didn't tell Luke I was going to do this, but I've got to tell you a story that's kind of funny. <laughs> so everybody knows about this craze with the purchasing of toilet paper. So... My wife went to Costco because we were in need and there was none there. So she came home and went online, started looking through Amazon 
and the only thing she could find was a box of 95 rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> so we bought it. So for one, if anyone needs toilet paper, let me know. But then, so they deliver this toilet paper to our house on Friday. And I open the door to this box and I have no idea how they even got it on our front porch because it looked like somebody played soccer with it. So me and Hannah go out there and we go to pick up this big old box and toilet paper rolls start falling out of the bottom. <laughs> so we, we tip it on the side and we, we're picking this box up and there's toilet paper rolls rolling down the front steps of our front porch just as the school bus stops and Joey's getting off the bus. So now everyone on the school bus and all our neighbors think we're the crazy toilet paper hoarders. So I just, I just, yeah, yeah. So. I, I just thought that was kind of funny. We, me and Hannah walked inside and we were cracking up laughing going, oh my gosh, I can't believe what everyone's probably thinking right now. But then again, we have surplus if anyone needs any. And I won't charge. Um, so one thing that everyone's kind of facing with this, obviously, is some anxiety. Um, so I just wanted to read something here. It says there can be so many reasons to be tempted, to be anxious, money, family, school, politics, illness, and right now, kind of all that lumped together as an unknown. Um, and the list goes on. Some situations can certainly be very dire from our human perspectives, but no matter how confusing or hopeless the situations may look, if we put our trust in the Lord and let our requests be made known to Him, and this is very important that we must cry out to him, pour out our hearts to him, and give our fears to him, then we can take rest. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 6 through 8, says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So now imagine never worrying about anything. Kind of seems impossible. <laughs> do you want to worry less? If you do, you need to pray more. Whenever we start to worry, we need to stop and pray. God's peace is different than the world's peace. True peace, and that, this is important, true peace is not found in positive thinking or in good feelings or sending somebody vibes. It comes only from knowing that God is in control. So let God's peace guard your hearts against this anxiety and the unknown that we're facing. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. That's in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. So if you would, just bow your heads and I want to pray real quick. And I'll hand it over. <laughs> Lord God, we just come to you this morning. And Father, we give you thanks that you're in control. Um, Lord, you knew about this long before we were even meant to be. So, Lord, we just put our trust in you. God, I pray for the elderly in our church body. It seems that this um, disease has affected them the most. And, Lord, we just pray that you would just put a hedge of protection around them, around their bodies, around their homes, and just keep them safe, Lord. And, God, I just pray that um, as things may or may not get crazy. Lord, I pray that we can just be a lighthouse to the people around us. I pray that when people look at us, uh, Lord, I pray that we would just be calm and that they would see something and start asking and start questioning. Lord, I pray that you would just use this situation. I pray that we would be brave and courageous, Lord, to just speak about you and to just show people that we can find peace through the unknown, as long as we trust in you. So God, we just come to you today. We trust in you in this time that we just don't know about. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you would put all of our hearts at ease. And again, Lord, we just give you thanks in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Oh, would you uh, go ahead and keep your heads bowed? And um, what I'd like to do is, you know, I love it when the Sanchez's are here. They, uh, in their churches, everybody prays out loud. So I, I want us to do that. Just everybody to pray, uh, pray that God would protect the communities that are affected by this. Um, uh, pray for, for those people who are most affected by this. Pray for uh, the children um, in our community and communities across the world that are, you know, going through this and just... Uh, has just completely warped their world. Um, I pray that the Spirit would use this to open up uh, the, the eyes of the heart, uh, open the, the hearts of people uh, to eternity in that question. So uh, would you just, just, uh, just pray out loud wherever you're seated, just, just pray. Um, we'll just have a nice murmur going on as we are praying, all praying together to the Lord. <laughs> 